If you tuned in a couple of weeks ago, you'll have seen that we had this renovation project or a long, long time ago on this Tyneside terraced flat and just at the point that we got completely finished and it was all done and dusted and lovely to live in, this little fella came along. Did we put our feet up and enjoy some irreplaceable family time with our newborn? Of course not. We bought another renovation project. So the water comes in here. Uh, and to a sink. It's uh, now fully functional. And when we're finished, uh, the water comes out there. Then the bucket under there. Job the good one. Hiya folks, welcome back. Right, same rules as last time. This week I'm going to show you the property that we ended up buying, I'm going to show you some plans and then you can pop down in the comments below what you would do with a property like this. So today I'm going to give you a full tour of what we ended up buying, why we bought it, why we ended up moving when we'd only just got the previous place the way we wanted it and then same time next week I'll give you the full guided tour of what we actually ended up doing to the place. If you remember last time and I'll include a link to the video from the last renovation project, we were in in a two bedroom terraced flat and our firstborn was now on the scene and causing havoc and this place came up for sale and it had something going for it that when you see it I think you'll understand why we just had to kind of go for it and buy it and bite the bullet and do another renovation and if you've ever tried to do a renovation with a newborn on the scene you'll know it has its challenges. So anyway, this is the property we ended up buying, and as you can see, it's a typical 1920s semi-detached house. Three bedrooms, I'll tell you right now, it's a small house. It's not very big at all. If you're not aware of what a semi-detached house is, in the UK, I would dare say that there's probably more semi-detached houses than there are detached houses. But it basically means it's two houses joined together, and the dividing line will be pretty much kind of down there, more or less where that drain pipe is. And we own everything to the left hand side of that and our neighbors are obviously to the right of it. This is the property boundary down this kind of side here. So that is, I think that was our fence. I can't remember who was responsible for the fence. And we've obviously got this kind of big area to the side here. Great big shed at the bottom there that I'll show you in a moment. Clay roof tiles, which is fairly typical for a property like this. I can't remember, did I say it? it's 1920s? The roof itself was all fine, no cracked tiles or anything. Some slightly dubious pointing where the bay joins onto the front of the house, but nothing particularly serious. Small front garden with just a little bit of lawn and borders. And then looking at the back of the property, you can see again, the roof is more or less fine. I mean, some of these tiles are a little bit raised, but there was no water coming in or anything like that. Again, with this being a semi-detached property, the dividing line between the two properties is pretty much down that kind of line there. So we own everything to the right of that kind of boundary. Briefly mentioned earlier, it had this great big kind of concrete shed thing in the back garden with a lovely asbestos roof on it as well. And it's kind of hard to tell from this, but the garden's on quite a slope. I would probably say there's about a, maybe a two meter drop from the top of the garden to the bottom of the garden. This is the window at the side of the property. You can see we've got some slight cracking there, whether or not there's any kind of lintel issues or anything like that. It's hard to even see a lintel on that, so difficult to say what's going on there. And also on one of the back windows, you can see there's some very slight cracking as well. Nothing particularly serious, but worth pointing out. Slightly closer view of the roof there. You can just see the soil stack coming up there. So obviously that's where the bathroom is at the back of the house. And judging by the fact that we've got the guttering there with the rainwater downpipe coming down the right hand side and we've clearly got all the bathroom waste going into a hopper which ultimately all leads down to this one drain so we've got kitchen waste and everything going into that drain apart from the toilet basically. So you can therefore fairly safely assume you're on a combined sewer but you should always check that out with the local water board. That's the neighbours adjoining property there. You can see their kind of back door. So they've got a little bit of an alleyway there. Not that it really matters, but uh, it might help you come up with some ideas. And the view just down the side of the property towards the road. This is that window that had the slight cracking above it. Whether or not it's lintel related is anyone's guess. Lordy, I remember that Vectra. 
You can see the back door leads out onto this kind of concrete area here and you can see the soil stack coming down and obviously that wall there is the neighbour's property. That's uh, an extension that they've put on the back. No idea what's going on with that plumbing there. If anyone can explain that, pop it in the comments. <laughs> I have literally no idea why they've done that. The property had been rewired so luckily all the electrics were more or less fine. Lovely gas fire in the living room. As I say, bay window to the front. Is that flies on the windowsill? Uh, anyway, the property clearly had been given a kind of lick of paint and a, a very bad refurbishment before we bought it. And if I remember rightly, we managed to buy this property because the previous sale fell through. And you'll see why when we <laughs> I show you some of the stuff we ended up having to do to it. But that is a brand new kitchen. You can see the oven and hob are literally immaculate. That's never been used. We've got a gap here that's clearly intended for a washing machine, but it's not big enough for a washing machine. You'd have to have a slimline washer of some description. It's not 600 wide. Stainless steel sink. It's just your cheapest of the cheap kitchen, basically. Forgot to mention that's a back boiler on the fire, by the way. So you, that is your central heating as well. Again, bathroom was more or less new and had been badly refurbished. Hot water tank in the bathroom, taking up quite a lot of space. And the cold water header tank above it there. Access into the loft. Hallway was pleasant and light enough. Unfortunately, because I didn't have a wide angle lens back then, it's difficult to show you what the bedrooms look like. The, the bedrooms are pretty small, to be honest. This is looking out the front of the property. And this is the third bedroom, the smallest bedroom, with the boxing here, which is typical for above the stairs. So you can take that out, but you'll be left with like a diagonal bit on the floor from where the stairwell is. So it's very common for these to be boxed in like that. And sometimes they'll have a wardrobe above, but because we've got a window here, you've got fairly limited options as to what you can do with that. So before I show you what really swung it for us and why we ended up buying this property, I'll show you the plans of what we had to work with. So the street is at the top here and then you've got the front garden. This is a plan view of the property, obviously looking downwards. And then you've got this kind of little driveway thing going down the side of the property. So you've got the front entrance hall here and that leads directly upstairs and come through into the living room here. You've got a little understairs cupboard here that has the electric meter and whatnot in. Obviously the big gas fire with the back boiler on it. Small kitchen diner at the back with the L-shaped kitchen and the door out onto the back kind of yard area. So this is all concrete. I've only shown the concrete area of the back garden. I haven't shown the garden itself yet. And then upstairs we've got the stairs coming up here onto a little landing at the top. We've got bedroom one. At the front there we've got bedroom three which you can see it's barely big enough to fit a single bed in and in fact i don't know if you even would fit a single bed in it tiny bedroom three bedroom two at the back there and of course the bathroom you can get a good idea of the scale of the property there now if you imagine turning this plan upside down so that the bathroom is at the top of the picture then you can get some idea of the dimensions of each room so you can see the little bedroom there is only 2.3 by 2.1 meters it's it's tiny bedroom one at the front there i'm only calling this bedroom one because it's a little bit bigger than bedroom two at the back there but which one ends up being the master bedroom well i'll let you know next time by the way ignore this plan of the bathroom because the bath isn't up there there's a cupboard thing up there i'll just draw it on this one so as it stands the bath is kind of up towards the top here and then there's a cupboard here that has the hot water tank in it so why, I hear you ask, when we've got the joys of a newborn, did we move out of a fully renovated flat with quite big bedrooms into a semi-detached house that needed quite a lot of work doing to it? Well, to put it simply, we fell in love with the view from the back garden. It overlooked a golf course, and the back garden itself was a decent size as well, so it really was the thing that swung it for this property. I mean, the garden was fairly overgrown when we first moved in, and you could barely even see the golf course. But, you know, we thought this has got potential and we can do something with this. One other thing that I want to show you is under the floor. Unfortunately, this property's got quite a big crawl space under the floor, probably about a meter high. So a good bit of room to move around. But we've got a slightly worrying thing in this picture here. I don't know if you've spotted it, but it is, of course, this here. And that is a lead water supply. Ignore that really bright thing coming down there. That's just an electric cable with a flash shining off it. But the thing that we're interested in here is this little grey pipe snaking along the floor there. So I'll, I'll just draw a line next to it so you can kind of see it's under a bunch of bricks and all sorts. And then this is the front of the property here. 
And as I say, that is unfortunately a lead water supply coming in from the street side. Not the end of the world, but it is something that needs to be sorted out. We knew this was likely to be the case because when we first had our viewing on the property and I would always recommend that you try running the taps and just check that you've got decent water pressure and the water pressure was terrible and I knew straight away this has almost certainly got a lead supply. Not only do you have the potential dangers of having lead in the water, but also over time the pipe can tend to squash and you lose all of your water pressure. And that's just another picture there of the lead supply coming up from floor level and through into the kitchen. Of course, the disadvantage of having a decent sized crawl space is that people crawl around in it and knock holes in it and don't bother rebuilding the dwarf walls. So that's something that'll need sorted out. But you can see the joists and floorboards are all in perfect condition. In case you're wondering, this metal pipe here would have been the old gas supply to the property, but that wasn't used anymore. You can see where the gas supply comes in where the gas meter is at the top corner of the property there and that's nowhere near where that old iron pipe is so fortunately that was one less job we had to worry about so there you go folks let us know in the comments what you would do with a property like this and i'll show you what we ended up doing next week same time assume there's a budget of about 20 grand or thereabouts i'll pre-warn that we're not looking at a renovation anywhere near the scale of the one that you saw last time because unfortunately to do anything fairly serious to this it would have been prohibitively expensive so don't assume you've got a blank checkbook to do whatever you want here we're gonna to have to rein things in a little bit and by the way last time no you can't do a loft conversion for 15 grand but yeah let us know what you would do 20 grand to spend how would you turn this property around all will be revealed next week so don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new to the channel take care folks and i shall see you next time Teddy, bye